So there's really two main reasons people are so upset about NVIDIA's RTX 40 series launch. For one, the prices for the GPU models announced so far are insanely expensive, putting them well outside the reach of most gamers' budgets. And despite NVIDIA's performance claims, the lofty prices simply make the card seem like a bad value compared to past GPU launches, which offered strong performance per dollar over the generations before them. And two, NVIDIA faced public outrage once the curtain was pulled back on its deceptive marketing tactics surrounding their RTX 4080 12 gig model, with its cut down die and core count, making it feel like an RTX 40 70 disguised as a faster card while being sold at a faster card price. Shortly after, the web was flooded with disgruntled commenters, claiming that there couldn't be a better time for AMD to save the day with their upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs, with many stating that they would be switching their affiliation from green to red just out of principle and for being sick of Nvidia's antics. Today, the embargo lifts for performance reviews of the RTX 4090, NVIDIA's first 40 series GPU to hit store shelves, giving us the first definitive look at exactly what AMD is up against. Well guys, based on the benchmarks I'm about to show you, I think it's time we all hold hands and start a prayer circle for the Radeon team. The new bar has been set, and it's pretty high. Before we continue, thanks to CD Key Offer for sponsoring this video. Right now, CD Key Offer is having a Windows 10 sale, including global lifetime keys for Windows 10 Pro. Right now, they're even letting you stack my offer code on top of their offer. Use code BW20 at checkout for an additional discount and snag a legit Windows 10 key for just 16 bucks. Afterwards, simply view and copy the key you just purchased, paste it into the Windows activation page, and presto. Enjoy every feature Windows 10 has to offer, ditch the watermark, and even use it for a free upgrade to Windows 11. CDKeyOffer.com is also having a back-to-school physical sale on gear like mechanical keyboards, gaming headsets, RGB decor, and more. Remember kids, just because you're going back to school doesn't mean you can't leverage this awful time in your life to your benefit. By the way, you don't need to be a student to take advantage of any of these deals, so congratulations, everything sucks a lot less for you. Check out the links in the description below and start browsing all of the limited time deals on CDKeyOffer.com. As I've just implied, the RTX 4090 offers blistering speeds and is now the fastest gaming GPU in the world. But it's also the most expensive one too. With an MSRP of $1,600, the 4090 Founders Edition is probably more expensive than an average gamer's entire PC. So just bear that in mind while you're viewing today's benchmarks. We'll be comparing the 4090 FE to the MSI Supreme RTX 3090, its direct predecessor, and the Zotac Amp Extreme Hollow RTX 3090 Ti, since Nvidia used a 3090 Ti extensively in its own comparisons against the 4090. Unfortunately, I was short on time for this video and couldn't test any of AMD's existing GPUs. Never mind the fact that I don't even currently own an RX 6950 XT, and the only RX 6900 XT I have is inside the custom loop of my personal rig. And yeah, I'm, I'm not touching that. The testbed sports a new Ryzen 9 7950X running stock, which is now the world's fastest gaming CPU, which will help mitigate any bottlenecks that might tamper with our results. The chip has plenty of cooling with a Fantex Glacier 1 360 AIO on top of an Asus ROG X670E Hero with 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo DDR5 6000 speed. Both 4K and 1440p resolutions were tested, while 1080p was omitted as to avoid any CPU bottlenecking. One last thing before we dive into the performance results. A quick look at temperatures on my open air test bench. Bear in mind these results are all over the place since we're using different GPUs and coolers from different manufacturers across the board. In a 15 minute run of Unigen Heaven 4.0, the RTX 4090 FE stayed surprisingly cool at just 64 degrees Celsius, and the card runs very quietly, I might add. Zotac's RTX 3090 Ti capped out at 70C, and the MSI Supreme 3090 went nuclear, hitting its temp limit of 83C. This is a big win for NVIDIA's 4090 FE, and even more impressive when you see how much faster this card is than the other two. It's worth noting that in this first round of benchmarks, games were tested with DLSS 2 enabled when possible. After we discuss the results of those slides, we'll also explore a second set of benchmarks showing what the 4090 can do with NVIDIA's latest DLSS 3. Now to answer the question you've all been waiting for, how fast is the RTX 4090?
Adding up the total number of frames rendered across all the games we just saw gives us an overall look at bottom line performance. At 1440p, the RTX 4090 on average was 15% faster than the 3090 Ti and 22% faster than the 3090. The uplift here isn't earth shattering and doesn't make a strong case to upgrade to the 4090 if you already own a 3090 or 3090 Ti. The gains are significantly more realized at 4K, with the 4090 rendering 33% more frames on average than the 3090 Ti and 44% more frames than the 3090. If we're comparing launch MSRPs, the RTX 4090 is about 7% more expensive than the 3090 while offering 44% more performance, which is a surprisingly good value. Of course, 3090 prices have fallen a long way since launch, but even for its current price of around $1,200, the 4090 still only costs about 33% more. Bear in mind that this is only applicable at 4K. The value proposition shifts in the 3090's favor at 1440p, which is to say that buying a 4090 makes a whole lot more sense if you're gaming at 4K and beyond. In fact, it's hard to justify the new flagship for anything less than 4K gaming in my opinion, as existing cards can still crush 1440p and below at a much lower cost. Meanwhile, the 4090 is roughly 23% more expensive than the 3090 Ti at its current price of around $1,300. That makes the 4090 a frames per dollar champ at both 4K and 1440p, albeit notably less so for the latter. Now to sweeten the deal, all 40 series cards, including the 4090, support Nvidia's newest generation of AI upscaling with DLSS 3. The new algorithm builds upon DLSS 2, generating entire frames by analyzing a game's current frame and the next one in queue to maximize FPS. Since DLSS 3 won't be available in games until the 4090 goes on sale, all press, including myself, received a handful of pre-release builds from NVIDIA for DLSS 3 testing. As such, it's hard to say how accurately these tests represent the real-world benefit we'll eventually see, but it's all we have to go on for now. The first of these builds is the DLSS feature test in 3 d Mark. This test conducts two identical benchmark runs, one without DLSS and one with DLSS enabled, then spits out the FPS achieved for both tests. The user can choose which version of DLSS they wish to use, provided it's supported by the GPU being tested. At 4K, the RTX 4090 soars past the 30 series cards with DLSS 2 active on all GPUs, but it absolutely stomps them with the DLSS 3 advantage, running 88% faster than the 3090 Ti and 28% faster than itself when using DLSS 2. During their press event, NVIDIA touted the 40 series performance with DLSS 3 in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it appears they weren't kidding. Sadly, the press build they sent only supports the RTX 4090, so I wasn't able to compare its results to the other cards. But here we can see the 4090 achieving an uplift of 110% at 1440p and a 106% gain at 4K. I can't help but get a little excited at the prospect of literally doubling your frame rates in notoriously demanding titles like this one. While there were a few more DLSS 3 testing builds that NVIDIA provided, I wasn't able to run all of them due to time constraints, so I chose Cyberpunk 2077 to round things out. Here we can see how each card performed without DLSS and with their highest supported version of DLSS enabled. At 1440p, the 4090 goes from 104 FPS without DLSS to 185 FPS with DLSS 3, a 78% uplift. Bear in mind, ray tracing is set to ultra here. At 4K, the new GPU goes from 87 FPS to 128 FPS for a 47% gain. Even with DLSS 2, the 30 series cards struggled to hit the 60 FPS mark, roughly half of the 4090's DLSS 3 score. Like DLSS 2, DLSS 3 boosts performance while retaining or even enhancing image quality. And while I'll have to take a detailed close-up look at the pixels myself in a future video, I was plenty satisfied with my general observations. Both Cyberpunk and Flight Simulator looked nice and sharp with DLSS 3, making it hard to distinguish from native res. The DLSS 3 results are definitely impressive, but I don't think it should be your main reason for buying an RTX 4090. As of now, only 35 games will support DLSS 3 out of the gate, and although that number is going to increase as time goes on, the average person is only going to want to play a small handful of those titles, which makes forking out $1,600 on a graphics card a tough sell. DLSS 3 aside, the 4090 is still a really, really fast card. So fast that it's basically overkill for gaming below 4K, especially when cheaper options will do the job and then some. Also keep in mind that you'll need to pair this card with at least an 850 watt power supply and a top of the line CPU if you don't want to leave any of its performance and your money on the table. 
Earlier this week, a friend of mine asked me if he should upgrade his RTX 3080 to a 4090, and I said no. He games on a single 1440p monitor and only plays a handful of hours per week because he's usually busy or tired from work. That 3080 is gonna serve him well for the next few years. As with most GPU flagships that are just rolling out, the RTX 4090 is for gamers seeking the highest possible frame rates. They're likely gaming at super high resolutions and want first access to the latest and greatest GPU technologies that the market has to offer. If you fit that description and you have the disposable income to spare, this is your GPU endgame for now. We don't have a ton of details yet on AMD's upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs, but they will need to deliver a serious generational uplift over the RX 6000 series in order to compete with Nvidia's new top dog. Then again, raw performance isn't everything, and AMD could still win the crowd over if they price their stack aggressively, offering a superior value to their competitor. Personally, I'm more excited to see what both parties do at the $500 to $600 range, because that's not an outrageous amount to spend on a graphics card, and that's where you typically see the most bang for your buck. At least historically. The rules of the game are changing so fast right now that it's hard to keep up these days. At any rate, we'll learn more about AMD's new GPUs during their official announcement on November 3rd. I, for one, love nothing more than a close fight, and I sincerely hope that AMD proves the title of this video wrong. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by the Corsair K70 RGB Pro. It features Axon hyperprocessing technology for lightning fast inputs, linear mechanical switches, PBT Double Shot Pro keycaps, IQ integration, and more. For more info on the Corsair K70 RGB Pro, click the link in the description below. Two things before you go. Let me know what you think of the RTX 4090 in the comments and smash the like button like it owes you money. Lord knows you could use it. As always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel for more tech content coming soon and I'll see y'all in the next one.